we're going to begin the painting by working kind of from the back towards the front. And we're going to start with the background first. So you're looking at a palette right now. I want you to notice is I'm working with a range of darks. And it's not all one color. There's brown mixed with blues. There's blue mixed with violet. There's brown and blue and a little bit of white. And there's still like a lump of brown there. So there's several values there that I'm going to be applying to the background. If I were to just do it all one color, it would make the background completely flat. So here is how I'm going to approach the background. I'm using a dry brush. So a dry brush means there's no water on it. And I am kind of texturizing the background. And the background has kind of an ombre to it. It's not just, like I said, solid flat black. Um, I'm deciding to go with a dark background. Remember, you can use complementary colors. Uh, I want you to, but you can also add other variations in there too. And that kind of brown color is more of a neutral. So it's a dark, almost black, but it has some brown in it too. And again, I have more than one color that I'm going to be applying. Right now, this is the blue and umber together, so blue and dark brown together. And I was using an ultra blue. When I say ultra, ultra is short for ultramarine. There's several blues that we have. We have phthalo blue, we have cobalt blue. Phthalo blue is going to be a cooler blue. Ultra is going to be a little bit warmer. So it's leaning more towards the red side. The phthalo is leaning more towards green. Think really cold. So when I go off camera with the brush, I'm dipping it into a new reserve. I'm also mixing it a little bit on my palette too. So I'm adjusting the flavor of that color on my palette as well. It may look like I'm doing just one shade, but that's not true. There's, there's multiple shades on there. So I'm going to show you in a minute what this looks like up close. There's a rule when it comes to painting about how to apply paint in layers. And here's the rule. You always start off with a thin coat at first. Because we're going to be doing that layering method, which I believe works better and it will look more professional, less amateur, um, we're going to be going with a thin coat of paint. So some of these paints you'll notice you probably already have that um, a lot of them tend to be a little bit transparent. So you're going to see that on mine. Like you can see a little bit through the paint to the white of the paper beneath. That's okay at this stage. Just realize that it's going to be covered ultimately for a more opaque look. So right now it's hard to see because it's a close up, but my hand is positioned towards the middle of the brush or towards the back. So that's where your hand placement needs to be at all times. And this is up on an easel, which you will be doing too. I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but there are different hues there. Right now, this is more of a red-violet added to brown. There's some reds in there. I am not using any black. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I don't paint with black personally. I make my own black or a color that's close enough. When you look at it, it looks similar. So I'm not using black at all. I'm just using blue and brown together, which makes a sort of black very close to it. And the reason I don't use black is because black on its own is very flat as a color. It, it can flatten things down. And for me, the goal is the illusion. It's, it's to try and uh, replicate that illusion of a three-dimensional space. That's not to say that you can't stylize yours, but I want you to try and push that 3D quality in your work. So I'm layering this, and you'll probably also realize that the paint dries pretty fast another and I want that transition to be a smooth kind of fade transition and you can see I'm going multiple ways and going up and down primarily but I'm also going a little bit side to side here and I'm introducing some lighter shades of kind of a blue gray right there but I have to make sure I fade it in otherwise it's going to look awkward and a little bit out of place there so I'm going to be kind of what I call feathering or kind of sweeping it into another um, color of paint right above it. So that's why my brush is disappearing. I'm going off and dipping it into the palette off camera. 
So there I'm trying to transition that a little bit. It does not necessarily need to be perfect for this, but you do want to have some kind of a transition going on. And I say that it's not to be perfect right now because later when we go to um, add another coat, we're going to be painting over this. Here's the thing about layering. If you get it once, that does not necessarily mean you're a good painter. You have to be able to get it multiple times. So that means like every time you put a layer on, you strengthen the piece. Now it's okay if there's uh, one layer that's not perfect, but you're going to be layering it up and eventually your final layer does need to be accurate. And I am trying to get an ombre. I'm trying to make it so that it's darker, the background is darker in the upper right hand corner and then it fades, turns a little bit warmer as it goes to the left hand side and there's some lighter shades in there too. And I am trying to also make sure that my edges are fuzzy, so a little bit out of focus, that's what I mean by fuzzy, around my shapes. Hopefully you can see that there are different shades in this background and that it is darker, cooler to the right than to the left.